here are the last few books that I have read over probably the last two months, which means I'm a little bit behind my reading schedule, but it's only about like two or three books. Not that big of a deal, right? So the first book is Putin's People, How the KGB Took Back Russia and Then Took On the West. Now, I want to start by saying, obviously, this was a Western-leaning book. It was written by a Western author, probably. And therefore, you should probably have some skepticism when reading this kind of book. And that that's out of the way, I think the book does a great job on what it was trying to set out to do, which was to point out that a lot of the current leadership positions, but also even like going back to like the, say, like 90s and early 2000s, were predominantly former KGB agents or officers that were in Eastern Germany or in the former USSR. And the author is trying to paint this picture that the leadership positions were taken over by an intelligence agency, which is true for the most part. And the author does a great job of pointing some of this out using not only information that they got from inside sources, but also information that they got that is publicly available, like things that are just known. For example, pointing to current ministers' histories, uh, pointing to official government documents that Eastern Germany had released, things like this, right? Like things that aren't too conspiratorial or too sketchy to basically not accept. Um, overall, this is a great book. If you're looking for a book on modern Russia, I would probably throw this book in there. There are probably some claims that can be doubted inside this book, but there are some pretty generally accepted claims that are made inside this book as well. For that reason, I would say it's worth reading. The next book is A Mind for Numbers. Uh, how to Excel at Math and Science. So this is basically a book about learning. I don't know why it says how to excel at To be honest, this, yeah, it should just be like a book about learning. It's not a book about math in particular. It's just a book that goes over the different learning techniques you can use to learn a subject, like some kind of math subject or some kind of science subject. And I will say that if you're familiar with a lot of these learning techniques already, then you don't really need to read this book. But like, here's a great example, um, distributed uh, cognition or like distributed learning. Uh, so like repeating something in periods of two weeks, as opposed to loading it all into like a four day window, you distribute it in two weeks, it's, you're going to retain it better. Um, th this idea about deep sleep, like REM sleep, uh, allowing you to have more creative thinking processes, just stuff like this, right? Um, also like talking about the myth of like raw intelligence and how it, that's usually not what determines someone to be like a great neuroscientist or a great mathematician. It's just like grit and brute force and consistently practicing. That's basically what this book is going to do for you. Um, yeah, if you've, if you've read stuff like this before, I wouldn't recommend this book because it's going to be boring to you. I, uh, I kind of finished it just because I wanted to say, well, I finished it. I didn't want to start it and then not finish it. Uh, other than that, I'd say this book's like a solid 6.5 out of 10. It wasn't that great, but it wasn't that bad. So this is a book I actually finished recently uh, in my read-along series, uh, The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker. I won't talk too much about this because you can go and check my other videos, but the, the idea behind this book is that we have a fear of death and that our fear of death results in a lot of different behaviors. That are like Our behaviors are a reflex of the fear of death, right? He talks about what the implications of that for society as a whole, uh, as your implications for your individual meaning inside life, the implications are for a technical view of psychology and what that means about the nature of mental health, things like that, right? Kind of um, explains the totality of human psychology by a reduction to the fear of death. That's probably the best way of explaining this book. And I would say it is a fun book to read and the, the conclusions that he draws do follow from the axioms that he makes. But overall, it's probably, like unless you're really interested in esoteric uh, like psychoanalysis worldviews, you could probably skip this book. You're not going to learn too much about how to cope with your fear of death. You might be able to explore it a little bit more, but this book won't talk about like in the same way that the same that's like Seneca or Cicero talk about the fear of death. It's not like that. This next book is Charles Darwin, The Victorian Mythmaker. I want to start off by saying uh, the author, A.N. Wilson, is a great writer. His prose is really fun to read and he does actually do some research and there's a lot of citations in here. Now, this book is somewhat controversial, um, and the reason why is not because the facts in the book are wrong, it's because he has a skeptical view towards evolutionary theory, and he thinks, in specific, Darwin's approach to evolutionary theory was incorrect, which, 
I would argue is to some extent true that Darwin's, Darwin didn't have things like genetics, didn't understand things like gene selectionism and stuff like that. Um, and as a result, people kind of had like a knee-jerk reaction to that. Like if you look at like a lot of the critiques of this book, it's basically people complaining about uh, his interpretation of evolutionary theory. And that's where a lot of the controversy comes from. In terms of the facts about Darwin's life, he's, that seemed to be okay. Everything seemed to be good there. I'm not like an expert in Darwin, but nobody complained about the, his communication of the facts about Darwin's life. Um, he doesn't do too much like psychological interpretation of Darwin. He does just enough where it's like, hmm, that could be true, but it's not like zealous to the point where, I don't know, you have like a Jungian, Jung's interpretation of um, Hitler's life through biographical facts, right? Uh, and that, that's a bit too far. But uh, this, yeah, this was good. I enjoyed this. It really paints a realistic picture of Darwin. Because a lot of the times people communicate like Darwin as this grandiose, like raw intellect person. But in reality, he's actually this just super introverted, sh sh borderline shy person uh, who just spent a lot of time studying <laughs> urchins and things like that. And then kind of pushed for a theory, but that theory was also discovered by multiple other people. And uh, he even points out to other books like um, The Principle of, Ge of Geology by Lyau. I don't know if I'm saying his name right has a lot of the same ideas that Darwin had. He says basically in the Victorian era, this idea that your environment shapes, environmental determinism, your environment shapes what you become, um, which is pretty close to natural selection. Uh, you see this in Malthus as well, uh, his, his essays on population and, and human dynamics, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that has the same idea that the environment's going to shape the organism. This kind of zeitgeist was popular at the time and Darwin latched onto it in many different ways and then kind of put it more explicit in the realm of biology. Um, overall, this is like, I would say an eight out of 10. It was a pretty good book. Now this last book, The Course of German History by A.J.P. A. J. A. J. Taylor, <laughs> sorry. Um, it's, it's actually a good book. Uh, it's a bit of a controversial book because what he says in here is quite um, unaccepted by a lot of people. And he's actually walked it back in some of his later publications as well. For example, like uh, he thinks that the causes of World War II can be linked back to some of the, like the formation of the German state and some of the dynamics that were there. For example, a lot of the aristocrats were um, in debt at the time. Sorry, World War One. World War One. All the aristocrats were in debt at the time, and the way they were going to pay it off was by conquering their neighbors, uh, specifically other German states. But unification kind of stopped that. Um, also, uh, he has this idea that the Germans have like an almost a borderline innate instinct to uh, just kill Slavs. To put it bluntly, <laughs> exterminate Slavs. And he talks about their history in a thousand year period, it's always them fighting Slavs. At some point in time, German people are fighting Slavs. Uh, <laughs> whether that's due to circumstances or some kind of innate subconscious drive from the German people, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot of interesting detail in here that you wouldn't get in a normal history book about German history that I really appreciated. The, uh, the book was meant, I believe the book was meant to be like a, like a field manual for officers in the army that they could get up to date on like German politics and German people. And he then formalized it a little bit more and turned it into a book. Um, I'll say this, if you're looking for a proper German history book, this is not that book. This really is just a book that goes into the more minute, minute details of specific issues inside German history, um, such as like the formation of the German state, right? Like you wouldn't talk about the formation of the German state in a broad sweeping brush that you would get in like an introductory book. It kind of goes into the details of the different leaders and the different uh, states and their economic situations and why they chose certain policies that they did. Uh, overall, I'd say this book is like a 7 out of 10. AJP a. Taylor is not the best of writers, and as a result, I'm going to take some points away. And the book isn't super coherent in, like, in terms of the, the facts that it presents. It does seem to be jumping from different time periods quite heavily and even different like, I don't want to say subjects, but it jumps out of timeline to focus on a specific subject. And then we'll jump back into that timeline. Um, 
Yeah, I, if you're looking for like a, if you're an advanced reader in German history, read this book. If you're looking for an introductory book into German history, don't read this book. So those are the last couple of books. I think it was one, two, three, four, five books I've read in the last two months, which means I'm a bit behind reading schedule. Um, but in my defense, I did read some bigger books. I'm currently reading some big books. And this always happens where I end up getting behind schedule because I pick books that are like 200,000 words long. But if you have any books you want to recommend me to read, as always, let me know. I bought some of the books you guys recommended in my last Denial of Death video. Someone talked about The Worm at the Core and uh, another book by Ernest Beckert that I actually ended up buying. And I'll look for, I'm looking forward to reading those. If you want me to read a specific book, let me know down below and I will check. But with that being said, 